Oh, a ghost wearing that, you know, would, you'd see the trail. There's every, yes. There. Yes, you could. Okay. All right, you guys, um, go get knitting or whatever you're going to do today <laughs> with your scarves. We'll keep it going right here on America's Morning Headquarters. See ya. <laughs> well, here's a look ahead here for you in your life. The Weather Channel has you covered from coast to coast. This week, we certainly have a coast to coast weather maker, starting with the snow in the northwest, thunderstorms in the middle, and beautiful weather in the east. It's just that it's all going to swing through. That's actually a really good point. So those of us in the eastern half of the country enjoying much warmer than average temperatures, mm -hmm. it's going to be coming to an end very abruptly, probably by early next week. Yeah. And we're going to get a lot colder. Yeah. The pattern change is huge. <laughs> well, playing it cool is an understatement in today's big deal. This morning, more than 3 million people are waking up to winter alerts and frosty temperatures. Meanwhile, the warmer side, and I'm going to put that in quotes, we are getting rain. It is warmer, actually above average for us across the east, but um, it doesn't feel that great out with the rain out there. Watching northern parts of Indiana, including up around South Bend, Chicago mentioned you, south of there, down through Peoria and Springfield. It's more scattered, but it's showery, and we've had had some of the really heavy rain from Kansas now into Missouri. This rainfall here right along I-35 and just north of it in Kansas in Osage City and Ottawa Valley Brook where there's a flash flood warning. We've had some pretty significant rainfall through the overnight hours coming in the past 24 hours, but really in the past, I would say 12, uh, where we've had more than 8 to 10, even a foot plus of rain. That's just the north of Emporia. There has been some flooding that's happening. Some of the reports that came in from Emporia, 5.91 inches measured, so it's not just a radar estimate. Redding coming in with more than seven inches, Ottawa coming in with more than five, almost six inches of rain. And of course, that kind of water in even a full 24 hour period would cause some flooding issues. Now we see rainfall moving up to I-70, a couple showers and storms there in the middle of Kansas. In Missouri, we've got rain coming into the Kansas City area, showers light right now, but all across the metro area. Let's take a look at how things are going to evolve today because, you know, we get a few more showers, perhaps into Chicago. It's not, you know, we do, that we get to dry out, although the bulk of the activity is sort of pushed through already. But scattered showers continue in Kansas City. We may get some thunderstorms. We may get into some heavier rainfall coming in here, watching that through this evening. And then we see the next big push come in, and that comes in overnight tonight into tomorrow, watching for showers and possibly thunderstorms, maybe down towards Grand Island, Nebraska, back into Wisconsin, where yesterday, cities like Galesville, we had flooding happening in the western part of the state. Now we're going to focus in on Green Bay down to Sheboygan for that heavy rainfall and that chance for that flash flooding. We're going to see the rain continuing throughout the day Thursday into Friday. Then the cold front sweeps through. Then we cool off. We dry out. But let me tell you, Chicago, we got a tough stretch of weather coming your way. Um, I mentioned that, you know, the drought here over the past week where we need it. Chicago, we don't need as much rain and we're going to get it. Look at this forecast here. Saturday, our only dry day. And then it gets colder, Alex. It sure does. Who they hit. I mean, again, still getting all of that. Yeah, one of the talkers from Otis' sides of Halloween or of uh, October mm -hmm. story that we did. You know, we've, we've had snow. So yeah. much so that you can cancel Halloween. <laughs> Absolutely. Too, right? That's what you plan for. There you go. All right. Love the comments. Keep them coming. Uh, you can take and send them to us on X. All right. Let's take a virtual view of Pittsburgh. Got a few clouds in the sky today, but overall temperatures getting into the 70s. It is a great day to spend some time outdoors. Do not let this day pass you by. The leaves are turning. I mean, it's a gorgeous day out here. Um, temperatures are going to remain above average for the rest of the week. So, you know, if you don't get out today to enjoy, you'll have tomorrow and the next day. But how much longer will you have all these above average temperatures? We do see a change coming. And by the time we get to the weekend, we're coming down. We're actually still above average just compared to where we've been. We're not going to be quite as warm. Temps for you today, tomorrow, Friday. I mean, they're going to be in the mid to upper 70s at this point. We're going to feel it all through the east. So let's just focus on what we get to enjoy the here and now with temperatures mid to upper 70s. Look at Raleigh 78. Atlanta is going to be 77 today. The sun is out. Beautiful weather there. It is a little on the hot side, though. Places like Jackson, 86 degrees there. New Orleans, 85. And, you know, even up towards St. Louis, 79 degrees. It is the warm side of what you might expect late October. It's well above average. Temps are running 
running about 10 to 20 degrees above average today. We're going to see this big ridge of high pressure that's been dominating the east continue to be our story and it just nudges and it actually gets a little stronger as we look at the next two days kind of nudging to the east a little bit more sending more people above average tomorrow 218 million above average and then on Friday you know we have a front making progress but it's just through the Great Lakes the Western Lakes uh, the Eastern Lakes are still going to be very warm and a lot of the east still above average so much so that we could be breaking some records now we get to it by Friday temps going to the 80s in Atlanta and Raleigh and uh, up towards Richmond numbers are going up DC 82 degrees that is close to breaking a record 83 the record to, be to beat uh, it would be tying in Toledo at 78 St. Louis we're coming close just two degrees from a record Philadelphia uh, the Phillies might not have won last night but you might be winning in the record books we see these numbers coming in at the end of the week temps are going to be very warm in the upper 70s then we go to Saturday's forecast and we're still talking about record breaking temperatures New York City at the JFK Airport that would tie a record Nashville in the mid 80s we're still enjoying this high pressure we're still going to have a very nice day out there you know, thankfully you know this time of year when you do get these warmer temperatures at least you don't have all the humidity with it so we'll be running that above average uh, conditions here all through the weekend from DC to Atlanta high pressure still in control the sun will still be out looking good as we get here through the end of the weekend you get to enjoy a warm and sunny one across the east Alex all right yes indeed but some change comes that cold it is time now for the Physicians Mutual Weather Wellness, and we have some cold temps and the weather that comes along with it, which can be dangerous, whether you're outside or on the road. So we want to give you uh, some of the, the forecast as well as some tips for dealing with it. Snowfall coming, perhaps more than a foot of snow is possible, especially mountain locations, but 5 to 8 or even 8 to 12 inches of snowfall possible well out into the northern plains. Temperatures are going to be cold, record-breaking cold in some cases, but looking at high temperatures only in the teens places like Great Falls Montana 20 in Miles City even down to Scotts Bluff here in Nebraska temps are going to be about 40 so if you run into tough conditions and you get stuck you want to make sure you're ready out there with your winter car kit have a full tank of gas a first aid kit in your car making sure you have some extra water and snacks and a cell phone charger also make sure you get all the things you need for the snow including a snow brush yep 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 Big changes, though, yeah. are on the way. Yeah. First, we got to get through the rain. Now, right now, again, fairly quiet, cloudy, but they're quiet. Few very light showers back off towards the west. You know, we're going to see a few of these showers continue to work in, perhaps during the day today. But this is where the big event is. It's still hanging back in West Texas. So we have a ways to go in Dallas until this gets in. We do, we do. Uh, in fact, west of Oklahoma City also finding some of that rain south of San Angelo and San Angelo itself under a flash flood warnings right but now. That's where everything's been training. You notice that it was kind of moving from south to north mm -hmm. and not necessarily from west to east. So that's going to put us in some heavy rain potential. Flood watches are up, including San Angelo, where the rain is heavy right now, but also including Oklahoma City, where it's headed. Absolutely. So there you can see there's that south to north motion. Uh, there's a, a little bit more of the thunderstorm activity, so more robust storm showing up there and also there uh, just west of Oklahoma City. And you notice in today's outlook for thunderstorms, it, it tilts, but not a whole lot. I mean, we're, we're going to see some movement, not a quick movement east with this whole line, meaning heavy rain will be possible along with that threat for severe weather. It's not a big threat, but look, there's, we saw some lightning out there already. Mm -hmm. Lightning will be a risk, maybe some hail or damaging winds. So let's work our way through the day, future radar time, and there's the activity continuing to move again south to north, to northeastbound. And then you see there is that sort of northern extent of the shield of rain that does try to pivot eastbound a bit. Uh, Dallas gets in on that as well as we into our Thursday morning, everything pushing a little bit farther east uh, throughout the early part of the day. I mean, we saw all that looming yeah. in West Texas. It really takes until overnight tonight for the storms to come in, but then they bring in about three to five inches of rain, pretty widespread. So flooding is going to be a concern. I mean, there's a whole big zone of areas that we're watching for that with the heavy rain potential. A few showers northbound here for us, clearing Chicago, heading over towards Detroit. So have that rain gear ready before you head out the door. Uh, you know, yesterday we were looking at it as a tropical storm mm -hmm. and really, to be quite transparent, didn't see it as this kind of force. I don't think anybody did. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it, the models didn't tell us this was coming. Uh, this that are finding themselves very quickly over conditions that will allow them to get real strong really fast. I mean, Look, as you mentioned, this time yesterday, we were looking at it as a tropical storm, thinking mm -hmm. maybe it gets to Cat 1, right. uh, maybe it moves well east of Acapulco, maybe there. This time yesterday, residents in Acapulco were thinking it would be breezy and showery mm -hmm. and rainy. That's about it. And then, of course, last night, we ended up with a landfall in Cat 5. Yeah. Right. Uh, again, Cat 5. 
strongest on record to make landfall in Mexico. I look back, um, of course, Patricia we've talked about, but Wilma, um, I remember that being a strong one, right? Wilma was a strong Cat 4, you know, and that was over in Cozumel. So th this is the strongest on, you know, on record. This part of the Mexican coast has yeah. never seen a yeah. landfall this strong, at least yeah. in, in the record that yeah. we have. So going back a long way. So this is a big, very big deal. Mm -hmm. um, exactly how strong it was. I think the forensic analysis will go back and we'll help sort of assess that. We had a reconnaissance in there a few hours before landfall. I think it was uh, 115 knots, uh, so Cat 3-ish, mm -hmm. maybe a little more. Um, but we don't have the data right as it made its final approach. Just a note we'll about, that out. about that recon. Um, I was reading a, uh, a tweet from one of the pilots who said, they were expecting a minimal hurricane, and then they, mm. they found themselves flying into a Cat 3. Wow. And so all the other data that you would use, whether it's just looking at the satellite representation or any other data around, didn't really lead us to that point, even at that point in its life lifespan. It was happening so fast. There was a burst of lightning right around. Yeah. I was able to do this. Maybe so, and that may be part yeah. of it. Uh, it was well insulated from some of the surroundings. But here's the thing. I mean, last night when I went to bed, about all of the you know, most yeah. dangerous weather was concentrated in a few miles. Amazing. Okay, so as we look at this, people are asking, how is this possible? What could have led to this, this incredible rapid intensification? Well, there's the rapid intensification going back just 24 mm -hmm. hours there. You can see that uh, going from a tropical storm to a Cat 5 in such short order. Here's a recap of the satellite pictures showing you that this thing is getting very, very well organized here on the final approach. And there it looks last night. Uh, the No doubt this was going to be a nightmare scenario. The worst case scenario that you can think of looking like that mm -hmm. over Acapulco yeah. just after right. midnight local time. But you asked the question, and we're gonna stick with this, guys. Uh, it went over warm water, warmer than average, but the heat content, there was a localized pool, a very high heat content that Otis went over on approach yeah. that gave it all the fuel it needed to become a Cat 5. This is very, very unusual. Yeah, yeah. and that, but that's a trend we see with most rapid intensifying hurricanes is Indeed. this big pool of oceanic heat. To show you how this all changes. The cold is going to be spreading. This is a really Arctic air mass that is coming in, sliding down across the northern tier. Um, as we get the cold air to come in to interact with the moisture, we will get snowfall. The mountains get the biggest. We see some snow spreading in across the northern plains. Here comes a disturbance that kind of spreads out. And you know, certainly up in North Dakota, best chance of getting accumulating snow with this. But the cold air really does dig pretty far south. So let's talk about the chances of getting snow all the way down into Nebraska and Kansas. Mountain, a mountain snow adding up to more than a foot, foot and a half, maybe even a little bit more at some of the highest spots. Uh, we'll see that in Colorado. We're going to see that into southern Wyoming as well. Cheyenne getting our first snow of this, out of this uh, for the season. Uh, even Denver has some snow chances coming in. We see that into your Saturday. It gets cold, Denver, cold, cold, like snow can stick and stick around kind of cold. We watch that into your Sunday. Then we take a look at what goes on here across the plain. So this is the Euro model. We've got a widespread area with about maybe one to three inches pockets of a little bit more. The GFS model has a swath of perhaps five to eight inches. Now this is into the weekend. So no, we still have some time to uh, to wait for this to all evolve out. But there's a chance and there's a chance in an area that doesn't necessarily see snow around Halloween. It's, you know, three to 10% chance based on climatology. So the probabilities based on history are not that high. But when you look at the forecast for Cheyenne, for example, and you have a little higher probability based on history, we've got snow on the forecast Saturday and Saturday night, and it's down to 12 on Saturday night. So if the snow falls, it's going to stick, Alex. Ooh, indeed it shall. All right, well, kid, definitely not. You just got to adjust out there. Uh, no doubt. Uh, for me, it's got to be the, the when it's hot. Because what? back in the day, now things have changed now. But back in the day, the costumes—they were the plastic. Oh yeah. The <laughs> yes, I do remember that. But you would still go. Oh yeah. In your life. The Weather Channel has you covered from coast to coast, and we've got a big series of storms because it's really two kind of back to back that is going to bring snow possible severe and it'll run into high pressure to start but eventually it does make progress all the way through. I mean I'm kind of looking at the weather maps uh, for the most of the eastern part of the country enjoying nice weather warm mm -hmm. weather mm -hmm. it's coming the cold air maybe not the snow but next week Halloween is gonna be very cold for many of us 
east of the Rockies. Yeah. It's interesting because it's it's taking its time. It's not just like boom no, one no. day everyone's getting it. It's kind of a slow right. death to the cold. <laughs> that we're getting to. Yeah. I mean, you have to be impressed by the strength of the high pressure in the east for now, mm. holding off all of this. Mm -hmm. Because where this is happening, we're going to be looking at maybe a foot, foot and a half, two feet of snow in a few spots, mountain locations. But we will even see some snow chances all the way down into the plains. So we will talk more about that coming up. We also want to bring you into what's happening in the tropics. Otis, Category 5 Otis made landfall last night on the western Mexican coast. And you're probably like, wait a minute, Category 5? We left us yesterday and this thing was a tropical, very, storm. A tropical storm. And how is that possible? Rapidly intensified and uh, we're seeing some of the images here from uh, the nighttime hours, early, early morning here for you. And you can see trees down. And that is going to pale in comparison to what we eventually see in terms of the damage here from this system. Yeah, and you, you're, you asked the question, so you may be wondering, we're all kind of had it going anywhere near what it ended up accomplishing. And another reminder that we're just not quite there yet with the intensity. And that's okay, but we just have to know that and be on guard next mm -hmm. time. And, and track, too, to be quite honest, because yeah. this went took a different track then, yeah. than was expected. Uh, the Hurricane Center, they did a great job, and they did the best possible job in the worst nightmare scenario you can yeah. think of. Kudos to them. I know many of us feel bad um, for what happened, and we're just now starting to figure out it all. Yeah. But, you know, we're there, and they were trying as hard as they can, and we were all were along yeah, with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to dissect this. That's coming up this morning here, so stay tuned for that. It's about, uh, about 40 past the hour. Um, but we also want to take you in.